so far looking at cybersecurity, we've only looked at external threats, which are threats to our organization which are coming from outside of our organization. So things like man of mill attacks, malware, hacking, botnets, all of these so far have come from outside, which are affecting us, but they're an external source. And actually, these are not the only threats we have, they're often the most dominating, but actually we have internal threats as well, which are coming from inside our organization. Now they do relate, right, the external threats into our organization often internally by an internal source, so they do relate, but we can categorize them as being either external or internal for now. So often these internal threats are actually harder to protect against because they're involving insiders, people who are working for us often, people who are trusted, and also have some knowledge of our systems. They have knowledge of our weaknesses and also any security measures we have it we have in our organization. You know, an attacker who is external might have little knowledge of how your company is working, what weaknesses exist, but somebody who's worked there for years will know and may find it easier to exploit. Now I have to say in pretty much every survey I've ever read on categorizing risk, employees come out on top. So actually this is from 2018, PwC, they did a survey and found that 27% of all cybersecurity attacks were done by employees currently working for your organization. So let's go through some possible ways which employees in particular or other internal people could cause issues regarding a cyber attack. So the first category of example mentioned is unintentional disclosures of information. A disclosure is where you are giving something away which you're not really meant to. And here unintentional does not mean they're doing it deliberately, it means they're just doing it by mistake usually. So human errors will fall under this category. Things like sending an email to the wrong person, maybe you attach some important information and send it to somebody working for another company with the same name as somebody in your company. Those sort of mistakes are relatively common and could enable information to be disclosed. Another example is where somebody leaves a device or some paper or something sensitive on a train or a bus or they lose it or it gets stolen. Not really a, a fault necessarily, well, not really a deliberate act. It is really the fault of the employee for being careless, but it could have the effect of giving away information which could be exploited. Another example is deleting files. Maybe the employee deletes something really important, an important bit of data, or maybe it's an important security measure. They delete it by mistake. That could cause issues as well. Now, unless that is a security measure, it won't disclose information necessarily, but it is also a human error. Another example of an employee not doing something necessarily malicious, but maybe stupid, which is visiting untrustworthy sites, so dodgy websites, websites which might be farming attempts, maybe a fake website, or have some downloads which are malware, and it could be installed that way. So I'm sure you know the type of websites I mean, ones where you've got loads of adverts which are trying to get you to click on them, trying to download stuff, often they're fake in some way, and they may contain downloads of malware in, which would cause issues on the computer. Not a deliberate attempt by the employee to get infected, but they may fall for it because they're looking for something a bit dodgy. Now each of these has got a different way of stopping it, you know, to stop things getting stolen, encrypt the data, to make sure we're not going on these weird websites, make sure you block websites and so on. There are ways to prevent it. It's just easy to have an employee who still does not follow instructions or still manages to find a way to make a mistake. Moving on to a potentially more deliberate act, not always but potentially, is the use of portable storage devices. Now a lot of companies will ban portable devices, things like USB flash drives, things like external hard drives, often they're banned. I know my school bans them and your school might do as well. Now why do they do this? Because they may contain malware which is brought on site. So malware could be on these portable devices, maybe the employee puts malware on a USB flash stick, takes it to work, plugs it in and installs the malware to cause some issue, maybe it's ransomware, something like this. Now the point is you could have amazing antivirus software which blocks all downloads, you've got incredible filters, but if somebody brings it on site and installs it, not really much you can do about it. And not only thinking about bringing stuff into the company, but also taking stuff out of the company, an employee could covertly, could discreetly copy information across onto a USB stick and take it off site and sell it or look at it at home, things which might be against the policy at work and could be quite sensitive. So the solution here is usually to ban these devices. You can block people plugging in stuff to USB ports. It's possible to do that as an administrator, so that's often what they do. And on that last point about information being taken off site, well, the employee could generally want to steal or leak information. Leaking is where information is given to an unauthorized party. Often you hear about journalists having information leaked to them, which is fine in that context. But in terms of us, this might be 
to other attackers or to other criminals giving money away, uh, giving information away for money to cause disruption maybe, or just for revenge, making the company look bad if suddenly all of this personal information is leaked, for example, or maybe their security structures are leaked as well. Another example which can be deliberate, can be just a mistake, is where the employee overrides some security controls. So a security control is, being, is some protection to try and stop an attack happening. Maybe the employee turns it off or doesn't follow the policy or modifies it so it's not working properly. And this can be intentional. It can be trying to make it easier for them to attack or easier for somebody else to attack. Or it can just be a mistake. And often because these controls can be quite annoying and can take up time and can be irritating and so the employee decides to ignore it or remove a problem which means the controller is not working but maybe makes their life a bit easier so for example you might have certain doors which are meant to be left closed maybe a swipe card is going to open maybe a biometric fingerprint opens it and some employees might be quite annoyed about this and so they leave it open or they hold it open for someone behind them and someone tailgates in those sort of things are controls but if an employee isn't following it properly that would cause an issue and the attacker could just walk in if the door is held open for them. Another example might be malicious might not be is writing passwords down and leaving them lying around that could be to try and give an attacker a chance but it could also be just someone being lazy and finding it hard to remember passwords and so they just leave it lying around.